Thank you for following my content. Thank you for watching this video. It's an odd business trying to create content and, and tell the stories of customer experience. It's really not for the faint of heart, to be totally honest, and it requires a lot of work. And you have to be passionate about it, which I am. So I'm passionate about it. Thank you for supporting me. And with that said, I wanna give you a quick recap of what happened in 2022, what's gonna happen in 2023. So in 2022, what you saw was I took this leap into original content. I did the CX Stories of Dubai. The uh, Expo 2020 Dubai was both figuratively and literally the most amazing customer experience in the world. And so it was really an honor to be there. Um, Jad Hindi, he brought me out to tell these stories and you know, it was inspiring from the spectacle of it all, but even more so inspiring from the people point of view. The leaders there are living this idea, uh, this ideal of failing forward, learning as you go, adaptive learning, teamwork. And I hear a lot about this in, in corporate cultures in the US, trying to, uh, to take on these sort of uh, cultural changes or cultural ideals. But I'm not certain in our country, we, we have an opportunity based on the way we've built our businesses to step forward like Expo 2020 Dubai did. And it was very refreshing and I hope inspiring to you if you get a chance to watch those videos to see leaders, world-class leaders, <clears throat> living the dream in terms of teamwork, adaptive learning, creation of great experiences, connecting with people at maximum scale. So that was the first thing I did, focus on original content. If you've been watching my feed, you'll notice I've gotten more and more away from curating content. Of course, I like to curate content from the greats like Shep Hyken, uh, Dan Gingis, those folks. But I also think that it's important for me to bring you something that you can't get anywhere else. So 2022 was really a chance for me to step out and do that. In addition to that, I did more public speaking. I started to be the chairman at some events. I was very lucky to be part of the Reuters events, CX events on both the East and West Coast, where they gave me an opportunity to chair, to speak to um, some of the bigger leaders in the world. I love the Reuters events because they are CX events. They're big enough that you get the A-list people, but they're small enough that you can really have intimate conversations. I really enjoyed that forum. And thank you Reuters for having me be part of that this year. The other event that I was uh, able to chair was CEM, Customer Experience Management in Africa. One thing I took away from Africa CX was they are, <clears throat> particularly in South Africa, but not limited to South Africa, extremely advanced compared to the rest of the world. Africa has a can-do Ubuntu uh, culture, and Ubuntu is sort of this idea of empathy to people. And having Ubuntu as a culture and a business axiom really, I think, puts them ahead of the curve a little bit when it comes to CX practices or, or innovation. So definitely something to keep your eye on. Thank you to CEM Africa for having me chair this year. Wonderful event. I learned so much and uh, thank you. The other thing I did was launch my podcast. I know everybody has a podcast. My podcast is called CX in the Wild. Here's the gist. It's unformatted, unscripted. When I'm out places meeting people and I think, wow, this person is saying something I haven't heard before. I just take the mics, I throw them down, we talk. Some of you have been on these podcasts, thank you. But what's interesting about them is we don't necessarily talk about the brands or the practices or the successes, but we talk about the people, what they did in their careers or what they think about to expand the community or the practice of customer experience. So for me, that podcast is less about trying to teach people what to do, but help people think the way other people think. And it's all original content. So those were the content and um, event activities that I did. So <clears throat> in order to pull all this off, I, I can't do it alone. I have an amazing team. And a year ago, we started Team Wakabayashi. <clears throat> about last year, we had about five people working on this effort. Today we have over 45 people working together 
and we service about 12 clients. And you know, in order to produce the content, whether it's the email content, the video content, the audio content, the social media content, the social media management, all of these things that I do for myself to bring content to you, we decided to do that as a team for other people. So we, we really had some uh, interesting growth as we scaled up to do these things for not just me, but for other influencers. And I think if I'm being truly, truly honest, and thoughtful about it. We learned quite a bit from the other influencers that we work with. So I'm not sure if you knew this, but we also manage uh, Ashley Yablon. Ashley Yablon is a, 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 a modern American hero who was a whistleblower who brought forth the biggest judgment in the history of the United States against a foreign country and his life harrowing adventure. And the work that he's done has been inspiring to me and our team and managing his um, birth of a brand from putting his book out to his website to now taking him around the country doing speaking engagements. We learned a lot about that. We learned about being honest, <laughs> truthful. The, that guy had to stand for something and, and in the face of the worst odds. So we learned from Ashley. We recently started working with Alice Marie Johnson. You may know Alice Marie Johnson as being a, a celebrity influencer voice for criminal justice reform. We've been working with her, you know, working with different influencers and understanding the engagement that's important, how to convert and monetize their brands while preserving their, their value to their audiences is an exercise that we go through daily. And we learn quite a bit from that. And I hope that in 2023, I transfer those learnings back to my relationship with you. Our other big, our other big uh, adventure in 2022 was we worked with uh, Heartbeat, which is an influencer management company. In that brand, they manage over 100,000 influencers every month, connecting big brands to influencers. And so, in that business model, you know, we learned a lot about how important it is to create original content to stay on trend, those sorts of things. But I think what we also learned is that influence is scaling, that a lot of brands are tapping into it. So both from a professional perspective for managing personal brands and influencers to connecting brands to influencers, but also my own advent adventure, and maybe it's more like an experiment to create content. All of these things came together in 2022 to um, create what you understand now is Team Wakabayashi and Dennis Wakabayashi. <clears throat> All right, so what's next? Really two things going on in 2023, original content. I'm going to be doubling down on original content, finding the stories of the people, the innovators and the brands and telling their stories from a perspective of just interest and investigation so that you as the audience can make your own decisions about these brands, technologies like AI, virtual reality, augmented reality, these sorts of things. I'm going to kick that off at CES in January. So you'll see a bunch of content for CES come out in January. <clears throat> the other thing, and this is why we're here and this is why I'm making this video is engagement. You know, my audience grew by 8,000 people in 2022. And you know, that's a lot of people and you just simply cannot have a conversation with everyone one at a time, although you want to. So in 2023, the reason you're getting this email is I'm putting down in this email a way for you to select your preferences. There are 10 different tracks that you can pick from. You can pick multiples, but one of 10 or unsubscribe. If you want to unsubscribe, please do. Nobody needs extra email in their inbox. So I'm not going to be offended. Just hit the unsubscribe button. But if you want to stay, there'll be 10 choices. If you pick these choices, my team and I will start to craft original content specific to the area of interest that you have. And the other thing I want to do is increase engagement by bringing business leaders together 
as you know, I'm a connector. So my goal in 2023 is to connect as many of you to each other, not just to me, as I possibly can. In December, we're having a private round table of all the people that I wish I would have connected with in 2022. And then in January, we're gonna kick off uh, some private round tables, unscripted, unrehearsed, uh, not filmed, just private events where what I wanna do is give back to you by opening up the community, having peer-to-peer -peer conversations that I'll moderate, and hopefully you'll get some value out of it. So if you're still here, please update your preferences for email so that I can get you the right content. Know that this next year will be about connecting you and others to each other, as well as I'm gonna to try to bring you valuable stories from behind the scenes or on the front lines of innovation, customer experience. With all that said, thank you. Thank you, audience. Thank you all. Thank you, Team Wakabayashi. And let's make 2023 our year. Thank you.